Folks, this may seem like a Wayback Machine to some of you newbies, but this remains my favorite plowing setup. For the lower Midwest, I don't know of anything better. And yep, we're already started. This blade, wow, I'm disappointed I haven't got it out in a year or so because it is so much easier to use than the loader mount blade. The, the float on it works so much better on the rocks. It doesn't have near as uh, much down pressure when it's in the float position. Anything else I've used, uh, be it a snow pusher or a loader mount blade, anything else I've used on the loader, when you put it in the float position, it, it pushes way down pretty hard, several hundred pounds of down pressure. This one doesn't have it. And I can run this without any rear ballast, uh, with, without even the three-point arms on. It's just so handy. I forgot how handy this blade was. I, I knew I really liked it uh, back when I was on the concrete uh, and asphalt driveways in, in, in our suburban setting, but wow, I love this thing. This thing really works nice. I don't get up near as many rocks as I do with the other solutions I've got. Snow's rolling off of it nicely. Well, folks, Johnny X is really showing his stuff here. Listen to that. <laughs> no problem at all with this heavier snow. Unbelievable. This particular blade setup uh, is, is the traditional one used even on deer garden tractors. So it's called the quick hitch blade or the quick attach blade. They, they don't necessarily have a consistent name for it or the names overlap with, with other names. So it's a little bit confusing. They're moving away from it at this point going forward. So newer 1025Rs are coming with a three point hitch if you wanna buy a, a direct attach blade. That'll probably be more expensive, I understand. Uh, it'll also be a little bit stronger. There have been some people who abuse these a little bit and can bend that quick hitch system. That's one of the negatives. Um, there's also a, a negative if you back drag with it too much, you can get ice built up in there and you can break off uh, some fittings off of the cylinders fairly easily. Those are the two negatives I know about uh, this particular solution. Well, there is one more negative to this system and this is probably the the most frustrating when you're out shopping for one used, and that is that there's several different attach mechanisms. Each tractor has a different adapter. I say each tractor. The 1023, 1025 use the same, but the say the 2025R, the first generation uses different. It's, it's very, very uh, cumbersome to figure out which adapter you need, and most of the time if you're trying to buy one used, you'll be buying one from someone who doesn't have the same tractor as you. So it's, it, it's, it gets just a little frustrating on that standpoint. Buying the individual parts new from Deere are kind of expensive. So you might end up buying a used blade that's not in very good shape and think you've saved some money, but then you end up having to spend uh, for a lot of the new parts uh, for the quick attach mechanism for the blade. Still, those are the negatives, but I love this thing. I love it because it's close to the tractor. I don't have any issues with the front end sliding. Like a, a, a loader mount blade is out further, so there's more leverage. Uh, so anytime you want to run the angle a little bit and you get into some, some larger piles, it'll push your tractor sideways. This one doesn't do that as much. It's just easy to see. It's easy to control. It floats less. Uh, I'm hoping they have a cost-effective solution for their new three-point three hitch quick attach, but, but if not, um, 
go ahead and consider getting this if you do a lot of snow plowing. Lower Midwest, anything up to where you might get 12 inches or so. One of the main advantages of a loader mount blade is that you can push up bigger piles. So if you get lots of snows back to back and you begin to have to push up bigger piles to get it out of the way, that's a disadvantage of this, but yeah. But have I told you yet, this is my favorite. I'm gonna plow some more snow. Got a lot of comments on the earlier episode saying I should get a snow blower. And maybe we'll do that sometime. We've had a big snow like this two years in a row. Of course, it may be five more years before we have another one. But it would be nice to add that to the mix and just be able to do some comparisons. I'm running in low range at this point, and you'll see that the snow really doesn't go off the end of the blade too far. But it gives you a pretty good look at how the blade floats real lightly. And when I was mentioning the advantages, I forgot to mention just how simple it is. I don't have to worry about the tilt angle. I just don't have as many uh, controls to worry about. I just drop it and float and go. I found high range at this point. Yep, I'm impatient. I'm going to take nearly a full width and just watch it roll. It is rolling off of there really nicely, and we're not really losing that much on the right side. It's a pretty big pile of snow for such a small tractor. Well, maybe it's a little lighter here, but earlier there it was pretty heavy. I don't know about you, but I find this kind of fun to watch. I should have moved this trailer. I was intending to move it, and I ran out of daylight the day before the snow. But I intended to move it off way out there where it wouldn't matter. And now it's just in the way. It's hard to plow around. Notice those front wheels continuing to grip. Stays right there and plows. Always a little nervous about it sliding over into the trail. I can push more at half throttle now than I could at full throttle without the turbo. This blade doesn't require any third function or anything like that. Well, I think I finally hit a big enough pile that I can't stay in the... Try that pile head on. No problem. As long as I'm pushing straight, I can push a lot of snow. It's extremely rare for us to get uh, two big snows like this back to back. So other than the drifting, we can get away with just pushing up these piles right alongside the driveway. If you are in an area where you get repeated snows without melting, having either a loader mounted plow or a blower would really help a lot so you didn't have to worry about uh, the size of those piles. I suppose the loader attached plows have become more popular recently mainly because they're easier to, well, attach. They would be more compatible across different models, as anything with JDQA or SSQA, if you're using a different brand, would be compatible. And given the proprietary quick hitch parts, they might be a little bit cheaper too. I bought mine before the small JDQA plows were available, so I didn't have any choice. But I have no regrets, as I've said. We get a lot of drifting snow here. Eight inches of snow. I don't know how much we got. I have no idea how much we actually got. But eight inches of snow will uh, often take two or three plowings because it keeps drifting back shut.
That's about as high as I can push a pile with this rig. Of course, every snow is different. several viewers ask why I don't use the driveway markers. I would find them helpful, especially on this particular drive here. It's hard for me to figure out where it is. But I like to be able to drive along like I am here and push the piles a good ways back from the actual drive. This will allow a good bit of drifting before I would have to replow. Not sure I would be able to do that if I had the driveway markers there. I haven't found a really efficient way to plow this circle. I seem to have to kind of go around it and then I end up having to plow what I would call the corners. I have to push them in together. I, maybe there's a more efficient way, but I haven't figured it out. I like to take these big drifts all the way off the driveway and hopefully not too many rocks in that first, that first plowing. And then I can come around a little bit later and, and get the rest of it and not plow all the way to the edge with that smaller pile. going all the way to the edge with this last cleanup, I'm hoping to leave the rocks in the driveway more than, than out in the yard. Some folks use a manual angle blade. This is kind of popular for the front end loader attached blades because they don't require the third function. But you can watch in this scene that I use the angle of the blade constantly. I will turn it sometimes multiple times even while I'm pushing. Sometimes I'll start at an angle and then straighten it up as I hit the pile and sometimes I'll start straight and then angle it as I hit the pile. Just whatever, well, feels right. I mention this because I would find a manual angle blade to be much more difficult to use. Well, I was in the hot seat today. And I was cold. It wasn't as bad as being in the snow, though. Yesterday, uh, when we tried to do the initial cleanup, um, even in the cab, it was, I mean, it was warm in the cab, but yeah, it was a miserable day. Well, it was real windy. Today is, is a pleasant day. I mean, of course, it's cold. It's in 20 or so, I don't know, 20, 25, but it's-, it's 18. Uh, oh. You're trying to make it sound like it's warmer than it really is. You remember my cold-natured wife. Um, yeah. Did I ever tell you that I really like this plow? Yes, I laddie. <laughs> if you know that movie, leave the comments. I it the quote is I laddie, you have frequently. Frequently. If you know which movie that comes from, let us know. Hey, anyway, we've had um well, we've got a little bit of sun left and I'm wanting to try one more snow removal approach in the last few minutes here. So for this episode, thanks for watching everybody. Thank you, Christy, for uh, braving the cold. She said it. I probably look really funny with the goggles up now. Ah. Oh well. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Hey, the National Farm Machinery Show is getting close, February 16 to 19, each day at the Deer Booth at 11 a.m. And yep, February 16th, we'll share a cheeseburger at WW Cousins, St. Matthew's location. You'll love this show. It's worth the extra drive. See you there.